With the dumbbell front squat, you're gonna be loading the dumbbells up by your shoulders in front of your chest. You can either have the dumbbells touching together or you can keep the dumbbells separate and that will make it a little bit more difficult as you have to, it requires a little bit of stability in the top part of the hold for the dumbbells. And in that front loaded position, whether it's neutral grip, palms facing each other, or palms forward, or palms back towards your torso, either one of those positions is correct. And each one of those positions can produce a certain effect, but I would just start with what's comfortable to you. You're gonna drop into a squat position and follow the normal squat protocol. You're lying on your back, feet flat on the floor, so your knees are gonna be up, engaging those abs, bringing the shoulders down and back, thinking proud chest as you're pressing out from the floor. Your elbows are gonna be resting on the floor and the dumbbells are gonna be in your hand. You're gonna press those dumbbells up over your chest. Uh, a typical issue is either the dumbbells kind of fall in towards your chest and so you're doing much more of a tricep extension or the dumbbells kind of fall out and you're doing much more of like a, a pec deck fly or a fly. Um, another issue is pressing too low where the dumbbells are kind of falling towards your hips or pressing too high where the dumbbells are kind of falling towards your head um, up, upwards. And so the more you can keep that dumbbell in line with the center of gravity, the more you're gonna actually incorporate all of the musculature included in the press. With the alternating forward lunge with the dumbbells, the dumbbells are typically gonna be carried on your side. You can also carry them in a front rack position or adjust how you're holding the dumbbells, but typically it's gonna be held at your side like a suitcase carrier, farmer's carry. And then you're alternating your forward lunge. So think about all the fundamentals of a forward lunge. You're keeping your abs engaged. You're staying nice and tall, nice and proud through the chest, shoulders down and back. You're loading. 80% of the load into your stepping foot, and then 80% of that load is being loaded into your heel, while 20% is being loaded onto the balls of the feet. And then you're not going so deep and so far forward in your lunge that you can't come back up out of the lunge. You should be able to step back out of the lunge in one swift movement, as opposed to a stutter step type movement back into that standing position. The overhead press, done with the dumbbell, you're gonna start with the dumbbells slightly above the shoulders. Think about having the dumbbells out away from your head, but resting so that your forearms are vertical or in line with gravity. And then you're gonna basically extend your arms above your head in full overhead extension, unless you don't have the requisite mobility in your shoulders or in your lats. If it feels tight or if it feels uncomfortable or you're starting to feel load in your lower back, then only do quarter press to then half press to then three quarters press to then full extension press. And then you're gonna need to work on the mobility of your lat and your shoulders before you can get to that full range of motion. With the dumbbell Romanian deadlift, it's just like any other Romanian deadlift in that your knees are gonna be almost locked out, slight bend in the knee and no more bend. It's really just driving that hinge movement or making sure that you're hyper engaging the hamstring or the back of the thigh and the glute. You're gonna think about driving your hips back into the wall behind you or you're seating into or sitting into the wall behind you as you bring your torso down you're going to feel a lot of engagement in the glute and hamstring as you let those dumbbells hang from either side of your hands and then bring yourself all the way back up to the standing position with the dumbbell bent over row you're gonna be hinging at the hips. Think driving your hips back, abs nice and engaged, shoulders down and back, squeeze the scapula together. And then you're rowing the dumbbells with your elbows to your side. And think about bringing the dumbbells back towards your hips. So just outside of your hips and back towards your hips. That's gonna highly incorporate the lats and upper back muscles in the bent over row. The dumbbell farmer carries might be the simplest and most effective way to use the dumbbells. It's gonna load your entire body. You're gonna hold those dumbbells on the lateral parts of your body hanging down, 
keeping your chest nice and proud, shoulders down and back, abs engage, and then you're just walking forward. You could even walk backward, you could walk laterally, and you could walk in circles or figure eights, but you're going to be carrying those dumbbells in a farmer carry style position. The dumbbell curls might possibly be the most seen movement in gyms around the world. Basically, you're creating bicep engagement and focusing on the bicep muscle by standing up, your palms are gonna be facing out, arms down at your side with the dumbbells in hand, and then you're curling up, trying to keep the elbows tight to your side so the elbows aren't moving forward and back and the elbows aren't moving outward as you curl up, bringing that hand all the way as high as you can towards your shoulders and then lowering it back down to the starting position. With the dumbbell lateral raise, you're going to be starting with your dumbbells on either side of your body hanging down. And then with a slight bend in your elbow, keeping your chest proud, shoulders down and back, you're gonna be laterally raising up those dumbbells up towards the ceiling. As you bend your elbows, it might make it a little bit easier. And then if you feel any sort of undue strain in your shoulder, obviously stay out of that undue strain. Do not cross that line, do not cross that movement. That is helping dictate your functional range of motion. So you may have to do a partial raise, a partial lateral raise in order to slowly progress the overload up to a full lateral raise. The alternating lateral lunge, I personally like to do a front rack position, but you can easily do a lateral carry with that lateral lunge. And so if you're doing the lateral carry, which is the easier way to do it, when you step out laterally and you drop that weight down, drop those hips down into that lateral lunge position, keeping your abs engaged, your chest proud, your shoulders down and back, those dumbbells are gonna stay on either side of that stepping leg. And again, 80% or more of your weight is gonna be loaded in that stepping foot. And then 80% of that weight is going to be loading into the heel of that lateral lunge step. And then again, you shouldn't be stepping so far out and going so deep that you're not able to come out of that lunge in one swing.